Hello, my name is Graham Werner uh, and I work for the APT Travel Group. Uh, I've been working for the business now for about 15 years uh, as part of the sales team. Uh, but I also love photography and I've been really blessed over the years uh, to travel all over the world. Uh, when I first started taking photos, you know, my photos were okay, but I learned a few tips along the way and I'd love to share those with you today. Um, I'd love to uh, 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 say thank you very much to Inspiring Vacations uh, for having me uh, present today uh, here at the Virtual Travel Spree. And I do hope you enjoy the event. So what makes a great photo? Well, to me, a photo is something that speaks to you. And whether it's a photograph of a family member, a beautiful scene, you know, it's really just what, what means something to you. Um, and I do love photography. Uh, there are a few principles, though, on how to improve your photography, and we're going to cover those today. One of those is the rule of thirds. So this is a compositional rule. And I'll give you an example in just a minute. But the classic, the classic example, I was in the Kimberley many years ago, and I was travelling with a girl named Sal, and she had a camera, and I had exactly the same camera. And we just sort of ended up taking photos of the same things. But every time I looked at my screen, I'd think, yeah, that's okay. And then I'd look at her screen and I'd think, oh my goodness, that's an amazing photo. And so this kept happening every day. I'd take a photo and then go, oh, that's okay. And I'd look at Sal's photo and go, oh my goodness, what are you doing that makes this photo so amazing? And she quoted this, um, this particular compositional rule, the rule of thirds. So rather than putting everything in the middle of the shot, which you've probably do, have been doing for many years, move things over to one of these horizontal and vertical lines. So as you can see, this is a shot of uh, a model um, in the Kimberley region. This is uh, a model Peter. And as you can see, I've positioned him in the top left third there. Um, and he's also looking into the image. So not only is it, is it created a bit of a, a different angle, um, but it's also created space for him to look into. So it'll, you sort of look at this image and think, oh, what's, what's he looking at? What's going on over there? Another example is this wonderful guard here in Prague, uh, out of Prague Castle, and I've positioned him in the top right of screen, and I've got him looking into the, into the picture as well. And again, you sort of think, you know, what's he looking at? But yeah, do try that. Try uh, the next time you take a photo to just move your camera over to the side. And a lot of cameras have these directional lines as well. So stop centering your photos and, uh, and try uh, moving your image over to one side. Sunset, sunrise, clouds and weather. Oh my goodness, I love a great sunrise and sunset. Um, the tricky part is capturing a lovely sunrise and sunset. So it does mean getting up very, very early in the morning. But the rewards are great. Um, this is a shot I took of, uh, of the Gold Coast uh, from the Gold Coast Art Centre. And yeah, I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning to get this. But the colours of sunrise and sunsets, they're just magical, you know, and, and human beings love colour. Um, but then there's this type, of, uh, this type of event with clouds. So I'm not really a big fan of blue skies. And a lot of people think, oh, it's bright and sunny, let's get it, take a photo. But often it's when you get the clouds and the weather that makes more compelling images. So this is a shot here of an iceberg in Antarctica. Um, this was about 11 o'clock at night um, because they had perpetual light down there. And it's really, it's really the, the depth of the clouds and the mood of the clouds here um, that has given this image so much, so much life. So who needs sky anyway? So every now and again, you'll be taking a photo and you, you take the photo and you look down and the, the, the scene just won't be happening. And often it's because the sky might be really bright and it's, it's blowing out um, the scene in front. So I always say this, who needs sky anyway? If you have an image or a subject matter that's really compelling, forget about the sky. Just move your camera down and focus on the things in front of you. And this event here, this, uh, these amazing humpbacks, it's a female with her baby uh, just behind and the zodiac on the side there. Um, and the sky was terrible. It was just white. It added nothing to the image. And so I lowered my camera, focused on the subject and took the photo. Photographing architecture. Uh, there, are, there are photographers that just do this. It's a, it's a lovely um, uh, part of photography. I love photo the architectural photography because it really tells the story of where you are. So say, for example, you're in Turkey and you're, and you're photographing the Blue Mosque or you're in uh, Budapest and you're photographing a lovely bridge. The architecture really tells the story of where you are. 
Uh, and I love a good story. So when I go home and I'm showing people my photos, um, I love having a bit of architecture in there as well. So as I mentioned, this is the Blue Mosque. Uh, and the Blue Mosque is an amazing building. Look at those incredible tiles there. So with architectural uh, photography, you can take photos outside the building, inside the building, but also look for those details. And here in the Blue Mosque, there is just so much detail here to take photos of. And then of course, here we are in Budapest and the wonderful bridge. And what really drew me to this bridge and, and, I, and I captured images from all angles here are the amazing lions here guarding the bridge. Um, again, this is a very early morning. I wanted to try and get a photo without the cars in it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I really do love architectural photography. And then of course, going for a walk, you know, exploring your destination and looking for those, uh, those angles uh, and, uh, and different positions to photograph your favorite bits of architecture. And who doesn't love a bridge or a cathedral or a church? You know, all make very compelling photos. Tell a story. What's interesting about this is how do you tell a story with a photo? And uh, I will show you a photo that I took uh, that I really love. Um, but uh, if I showed you the photo without the story, it, it may not mean much to you. So how do you get the story? Well, the big one here is communication. When you travel and you talk to people, and look, not every country, um, pe not every country that you visit, people are willing to have a chat. But there are lots and lots of countries around the world where people really enjoy you engaging with them. Uh, and this particular shot here was, uh, was taken uh, in Phnom Penh. Now, um, we went into this orphanage and I noticed these little kids almost straight away. And this little boy, you know, I sort of, I, I looked at the little boy and the little girl, I noticed the balloon, I thought, oh, there's something here, there's, there's a story. And I had a little chat to the boy, I spoke to his teacher, I pointed to my camera just to make sure that he was okay. I asked the teacher's permission, she said, go right ahead. I took the photo and when I turned the camera around, just that look of joy on both the kids' faces when they saw their own pictures. But that's not the story. Why does she have the balloon in her mouth? What's the balloon on the ground? He's got the board game. So when she, uh, when she arrived at the orphanage, she was very, very sad. And this little boy, no relation at all, the second day that she'd arrived, walked over, grabbed her hand and tried to help her feel better. He entertained her with board games that didn't work. And then he found a balloon and he gave her a balloon and she stopped crying. And that was six months ago. So for six months, he, he just follows her around, holds her hand, gives her a balloon when she feels sad, plays board games. And I just thought, you know what, I, I, I would never have heard that beautiful story um, of relationships and friendship um, if I hadn't spoken to the teacher and inquired about the kids. And uh, it's, I just find this really compelling image. This shot. Now, I didn't have to talk to anyone to get a story here. Um, this shot is actually in Poland. But what I found really compelling uh, was the, the beggar here with her cup out, just the, the expression on the people's faces there uh, walking past. That there is the story. So look for your stories when you take photos. Photographic transport. So it's always good to, you know, to work out and remember how you got around. Um, and there's so many wonderful transport options in the world of travel, train, bus, boat, ship, um, you name it, you can, you can pretty much transport on it. Some of my favourite transport in the world is the Rocky Mountaineer here in shot. Um, the Rocky Mountaineer is an amazing experience, as is the Rockies. Um, and whether it's silver leaf or gold leaf, it really is one of the world's greatest rail journeys. Um, so this particular shot here, every single carriage has a bit of an open air section. I just hung out the window there carefully, of course, and then took a couple of shots here of the train disappearing around the bend. I love this photo. And then uh, out in, uh, um, in Canada there, in Banff, this is uh, the Sulphur Mountain Gondola in Banff. And uh, yeah, it was actually quite challenging. It was really, really cold, but I did find an angle of the tracks here disappearing away and the cable car about to head down the hill. So photograph your transport. Look for colour and light. Look, colour and light really makes the photo in my, in my mind. And uh, as human beings, we're very visual. We're very attracted uh, to colour and light. So where do you find colour and light in a photo? in your own backyard. You know, we're so blessed in Australia with our wonderful birds and wildlife. This little rainbow lorikeet, um, they visit my garden. I've got lots of grevilleas. So certainly uh, no lack of colour here in this shot. Here, um, I am in uh, Vietnam and 
I was actually with a big group of people and we, we weren't allowed to stop. We had to keep going. This was just one of those moments, that planetary alignment, where I, all I did was I saw the yellow. I saw the yellow curtains, the yellow marigolds, the beautiful yellow flowers here, pulled my camera up and went click and didn't even look at the shot until I got back to Australia. And just the joy I felt when I, when I edited the image and saw all the yellow and his lovely smile here. And uh, yeah, certainly um, love my colour. And of course, sunsets. And um, this is uh, uh, probably one of my most published images. Um, with APT, we do a travel magazine as well. So I was very fortunate to have this one printed. And uh, you know, get your photos printed. Don't just let them sit on the hard drive. It's um, great to see images printed or published, Facebook, Instagram, a coffee table book, make your own postcards or posters, you know, print your images. Um, it really is worthwhile. And if colour isn't your thing, go black and white. I mean, black and white's where it all started. Um, I love black and white photography. For me, when you take the colour away, it just makes me focus more on the detail and look for that story. This is one of my shots here from Poland, just looking at the hotel window across all the roofs there. And in colour, it just didn't work. I don't know why. Maybe the sky was a bit too bright, but it really worked in black and white. And uh, this, this image has been printed uh, and it looks great in a frame. And of course, this one. Again, the colour, the leaves were super green uh, and I just couldn't get the image to work. And then as soon as I took all the colour out, um, it just worked for me. So remember your black and white photos. Reflections. Um, this is a great focus to have when you're um, travelling around and looking for photos. Look for reflections, whether it's a reflection in a cup of tea or in a mirror. Refle reflections really do add a lot uh, to your image. As an example, here in uh, Budapest at Parliament House there, um, I, I headed out of the hotel very early in the morning and arrived opposite Parliament House as the sun started to rise and it cast these incredible light. Um, the, the, the water was very still and it just made for these beautiful reflections. Here again in Poland with the dancers, I may have had a, a couple of vodkas here and some pierogi, so um, uh, I'm not, I can't remember what motivated me to look in the mirror here, but I just think it makes for quite an interesting image seeing the reflection. And of course, sometimes the reflections are so obvious you don't even notice them. And uh, this is David, he was part of our Antarctic expedition. And there's me right in the middle of the shot there taking his photo. To be honest, all I thought about was taking his photo. And again, it wasn't until I looked at the image later that I noticed how clear uh, the reflection was in his goggles. So reflections make for great subjects. Look for different angles. So it's very tempting to just stand there, you know, trying to make sure your hands aren't wobbling and take a shot. But it's also really important to look for different angles. So whether or not you're sort of going this way or taking a photo down, looking up or up, looking down, try different angles. It really does make a difference to your images. As an example, I always, whenever I'm on set, I always do a wide angle. So wide angle views, they capture all that information, all of that scene there. And you've got uh, Peter and Christy uh, uh, looking out at the waterfall here in Mitchell Falls uh, out in the Kimberley region. So this captures all the information. It tells the story. But then I wanted to get closer. I wanted to look for a different perspective. And look how different this shot is, even though um, it's the same people looking at the same thing, but how different this looks. It could probably be a, an advertisement for hiking boots. But I love different perspectives. And this one here, so uh, I, I, I visited Australia Zoo with the kids. Um, I took, brought my camera with me, uh, got some shots of the wildlife. And then uh, the kids really wanted to see the tiger show. And uh, there's a massive big uh, um, um, uh, glass uh, view um, on the water there. And really the glass wasn't that clean, so it didn't really make for a great photo. So I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll, look, for, I'll look for some kind of angle. I walked up to the glass and right on the water line, um, I, I put the camera right on the waterline towards the glass and it elongated his body out. And it just, oh, it just made for this really interesting photograph. So yeah, definitely look for different angles when you're shooting. Focus on the eyes. This is really important. And whether you're, you're shooting wildlife or you're shooting people, um, it's really important to have those eyes in focus. Um, there's nothing that turns me off photography more than having an out of, out of focus eyes, particularly if you're doing a close up. And as an example, this uh, amazing little critter here, um, one of the lemurs from Madagascar, 
um, those piercing eyes. So that was my focus. I really wanted to make sure those eyes were sharp um, and that made for quite the compelling image. But you know what, don't get too close. If you're in the wild, you're in Africa, you know, be mindful of your, of your, your safety and your well-being because you don't really want to get too close to every animal out there. So um, certainly not to these big grizzly bears in North America. Um, if you've been to Canada, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's amazing seeing a bear in the wild as long as they're not too close, of course. So to wrap things up, I just wanted to communicate how important it is to be present, to be in the now. Um, and on screen at the moment, the actual experience of the destination is always going to be better than reflecting on it later. Um, I was in Antarctica um, looking out at um, the uh, wonderful glaciers there, and um, it, uh, I was trying to get a photo of one of the bits of ice carving off, and it just wasn't happening for me. Every time I'd put my camera over here, a bit would go off over there, and I put my camera here and some ice would carve off over that side, and I got really frustrated. So I ended up just putting my camera away. And a few minutes later, directly in front of me, this amazing piece of ice carved off the shelf, hit the water with a loud boom, and it, I just couldn't believe it happened in front of me. Had I been messing around with the camera, I may have missed it. But it really affirmed to me how important it is to be in the moment and just appreciate where you are, how different it is to home. You know, the people around you, the smells, the sights, the sounds. It's just crucial to be present when you're travelling. But photos and video help transport you back in time to those amazing travel moments. I know some of you may not be interested in travel photography, and that's totally okay. You know, um, you commit it all to memory. Um, or maybe you don't have people to share it with. You know, it's, it's, it's completely up to you to take photos or not. But for me, I just love coming home and then looking at all the images I've taken because it just transports me back to that amazing feeling of being there. I really love my travel photography. So folks, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, please enjoy the virtual travel spree um, and a massive thank you to Inspiring Vacations for having me. Uh, if you'd like some inspiration on travel photos, uh, you can always uh, visit my Instagram uh, account on, on, the, uh, on the screen at the moment. And of course, ATG, Australian Pacific Touring, APT Travel Group, have an amazing website as well that you can check out. So thanks very much for watching uh, and enjoy the show.